Hey guys, welcome to Bar Z. My name's Stan, and today we're going to show a, a tool that a viewer sent in, and this comes to us from uh, uh, Mike <clears throat> over at uh, Catalina Racing, and uh, he made this is a shop made tool, and it's uh, it's a it's a version or his version of the Ron Repeatometer. So I thought it was pretty interesting. <clears throat> he sent me drawings with it, and I'm going to share those with you here. Uh, during, you know, uh, at the end of this video, I'll share the drawings and everything with you. But you can see it's got, see that's got a slight amount of movement here. And we've got a lock. And that actually locks this movement. So they've got a, he's got a little lock set up here. And this swings on a couple of, uh, back here, there, uh, there's a set screw from each side. <clears throat> with a ball bearing on the end of each set screw. Which provides us with our, with our little pivot here. We've got kind of an anvil here, and this is adjustable. And we drop our indicator in. We've got a uh, pinch bore, so we drop an indicator in with uh, with an appropriate bushing. You sent some bushings for a couple different sizes indicators, and uh, we put an indicator in here, and we slide this around on a surface. And it's uh, like I say, it's a repeatometer, so it's for, it's for measuring very precise surfaces, uh, like your like a surface plate you know if you're if you're doing if you're scraping in a surface plate you could use that if you are checking your uh, granite surface plate you can check that now he did send some feet for it and I actually have to complete it he sent in these uh, little pieces of carbide and these are just carbide inserts they're the square inserts and they do have a would that be a s Oh, SP prefix. So it's got a square profile, positive insert. You can see it's got a back rank. Uh, but these need to be fastened to the bottom of this. And we're going to do three. So we're going to have uh, two in the back, or no, one in the back, two in the front. And he's got a threaded hole here, but it doesn't matter if we cover that up. So we're just going to be kind of gluing these on to the bottom as so. And uh, after they're after they're ground on, we can either lap them with some with a diamond to get it sitting nice and flat, or we can put it on the surface grinder with a uh, with a diamond wheel and get those three legs flat. And then we can play with this thing. And after we get the, the uh, um, after we get the feet on it, um, which what we're gonna use is this stuff right here, uh, Loctite 380. Uh, this is kind of this is kind of a CA glue, but it's got some body to it. It's kind of a heavy um, uh, Loctite, and this was recommended to me by Mr. Robin Renzetti. I had a conversation with him, and he recommended uh, Loctite 380 for gluing carbide onto steel. And he said what you did need to do <clears throat> before you do it is roughen it up a little bit. Now, Mr. Daniel Gunderson gave me this at the bash. This is made by Fiskers. You can probably get this anywhere, but this is a little diamond card. You can see I've been honing stuff with it. It's it's actually pretty rough. If I had to guess, I'd say that's probably about a 300 or 400 grit right there. So it's pretty rough. And uh, we're just going to be going on the back side of these and roughening up the back of the, of the uh, carbide. And then we're going to roughen up some spots uh, where we're going to put our feet. And then we're going to glue them on and probably just use the weight of the thing to, to drop it down and hold those feet in place. So uh, if, you look, uh, if you look up the properties of the 380, it's got a high shear strength. And they call it a, uh, a heavy bodied uh, compound. So we'll see what it's all about. I believe it's black. And I haven't read the MSD sheet. That's the MSD sheet they give you there. I guess that unfolds six ways from Sunday, but uh, okay. So let's get this thing completed, and uh, then we can play with it a little bit, and then I'll uh, share with you uh, where you can get plans to build your own. Okay, well, we've got our, uh, uh, I got our feet um, glued on with that Loctite 380, also known as Black Max. I gave it a quickie lap on the diamond uh, with a diamond stone. Um, and that's about all I did. You know, I installed my gauge and here I'm ready to go. Uh, I went ahead and zeroed up. Used this little anvil right here uh, to zero up. Uh, I had to find the appropriate tip uh, for that thing out of, uh, out of a selection that I have. 
Uh, this is a Sterrett Selection uh, 25R, and uh, this, this has got various contact tips on it. So I had to kind of find an intermediate one that would uh, work. And you don't want to use a flat tip on this, a, the, the lapped flat one. Uh, go ahead and get yourself a curved or ball type uh, tip. That's going to work best up against that arm that pivots up at you. But uh, I promised you guys I'd, I'd give you plans for this. If you look down in the description of this video, <clears throat> uh, the guys over at Catalina Racing, he sent over uh, PDFs on everything uh, for all the parts to make this. So if you look down in the description, I've got it linked in my Dropbox. Uh, feel free to go to Dropbox and download it. And uh, you can make your own uh, repeatometer. And with very few parts, you know, those carbide feet don't necessarily have to be square. They could be triangular, they could be round, whatever, you know. Um, so it, it's pretty simple to build. Uh, and I thank the guys over at Catalina Racing for sending this over. Uh, I can do a quick demonstration of it. Everyone's seen a gauge not move before? <laughs> well, there's a gauge not moving. I'll tell you what I will do. I will drop it. I'll, I'll, I'll just let it go just till it starts dropping off the table. And you can see it just starting to fall off there. Okay, so you can see it kind of falling off. And then maybe we can simulate a high spot. I'll use my instructions from the Loctite. And see if we can get under the... Uh, under the uh, little foot there, and there it goes, and pull it back. So we know our paper is about th three and a half thousandths high. And we're just going to try to gently push it off of that. All right. So it'll read highs and lows. So you can see the value in that. If you're, you know, if you're working on your surface plate and you think you might have a dish or a hump, or maybe you're scraping something in and you think you got a dish or a hump, a little repeatometer is uh, wonderful for finding those uh, highs and lows. All right, but I uh, thought you guys would be interested, in, uh, and I thought I'd share the plans with you. My viewer was nice enough to share them with me, so I thought I'd share them with you if you want to build your own. Uh, it's not super hard, and it's uh, the results are good, and so far, I can, as far as I can tell, this thing works great. Just sliding it around here on the plate and checking it out. All righty, uh, thanks for watching.